My Hero Academia. This is My Hero Academia, chapter 371, together with Shoji. Uh, last we left off, we cut away from the main battle at hand with uh, Deku and All for One uh, to check in on Shoji's team that is protecting Kuragiri uh, from the oncoming army of heteromorphic uh, corked people uh, led by Spinner, who is now a giant hulking lizard man. Uh, and he's... Uh, he, uh, things are not... Things are going so-so. You know, they've, uh, they're have they getting overwhelmed by the sheer number of people that are swarming the hospital. Uh, but we have Shoji from Class 1A, uh, one of the main characters of the cast overall, is uh, taking up center spotlight to uh, to stop Spinner from, uh, from proceeding onward. Uh, we finally got his little mask off moment. We get to see Shoji without the mask. Uh, and, uh, he was just, uh, yelling at the people to be like, tell me you have a plan because this fucking mobbing a hospital with innocent people in here is not it. Uh, that's not it. Yeah. Uh, Spinner is just like, ask if me have plan. Ow. What his problem? <sighs> Boy hurt me. Uh, we see that, uh, Koda notices that Shoji has taken center stage. Um, and he, and, uh, he, uh, Spinner is just standing there in confusion as his followers are just like, we got to keep going. We got to steal back Kuragiri, even if that means sacrifices. Just tell us what to do and we'll follow. And uh, Spinner just like looks off in a daze and is just like, done care. Uh, <laughs> his followers are like, wait, what? You, you don't, you don't care? Uh, you don't care. Yeah. But uh, that uh, scorpion spider uh, quirked person on the top of the building is just like kind of taking over him for him and being like, he's saying that history is written in blood, meaning such things are unavoidable. And he's just like thinking to himself, like stupid kid and spinner. They're making it harder than it used to be. Um, but, you know, he commands the army to press forward and uh, they start to do that. Uh, but then Shoji looks into Spinner's like eyes and is just like, Spinner, you're about to set us back 30 years. Uh, and, um, Spinner is just like thinking to himself, just like, you know, thinking back to when, um, I guess, uh, all for one gave him the quirk. Um, and it turns out he's given him more than one quirk. He's given him this like big scaly quirk called scale mail, uh, that will, uh, like, increases defense on top of that so scales just start to protrude out of spinner's body and he just lunges at shoji sending him backwards into the uh giant into a building uh with his big old multi-blade multi-knife sword um and he sends shoji flying around he cuts off one of his arms off of the off of shoji's tentacles uh and um Koda is just like watching on just being like just getting pissed off because uh this guy like the one in charge really is like calling him basically like a traitor and that they're doing like what they're doing is right uh you know because this is the revolution and um they're what they're doing today will lead to rights for heteromorphs in the future um and it's at that moment Koda starts to remember as like his head starts to vibrate a little um we get uh a, a, a scene where the class 1a students are all sitting around shoji and he's kind of explaining his backstory and everything he's taken their ma- his mask off uh for them uh before it seems um and he explains that his parents uh weren't heter- heteromorphs like him they didn't have the arms but they lived in a town that was like really backwards and they would uh they all came out in force of a blood cleansing when they touch it when uh, Shoji touched someone. Um, so, you know, he was not have he, he was like born on the outskirts. Uh, he wasn't born in a city. Um, you know, Koda Tokoyami and other people like that wouldn't, uh, they might have heard of this stuff in textbooks, but in like rural areas, there's still like abuse happening uh, as we uh, learned in the last chapter. Um, so, yeah, he, he's just kind of explaining it. And uh, Mineta has a moment where he's like, oh, shit, I called him an os- octopus one time. And he uh, he really apologizes. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't know. 
And um, Shoji's like, I know you didn't mean anything by it. In fact, he changed he he named himself Tentacle, Tentacle because the Ta in Coal is uh is like an abbreviated uh, word for octopus in Japanese. So, you know, he it's to show that he's aware of it and he's like kind of, you know, um, taking back the power and being called an octopus, I guess. Um, and he has like, you know, those scars around him are like, obviously like, um, you know, signs of abuse. Um, so people, he, and he wears the mask mostly because he doesn't want people to like think, get the wrong impression of him and think that like, he's kind of out for revenge in any way. He doesn't want to give off the impression that he holds a grudge. Um, Tokoyami is just like, well, that takes strength. And he's like, well, you know, I've, I've been through a lot. Um, and, uh, I'd rather dwell on the bad memories and, you know, instead of, uh, dwelling on the bad memories, I would rather, uh, focus on these like single good, uh, moments in his, uh, in his life, thanks to his body. Uh, and we get this little like flashback within a flashback where he, um, he, it, it seems that as a young boy, he like saved this little girl from falling off of, um, of a waterfall. Like she was like being swept away by a river and he used his arms to protect her. Um, so, you know, at that moment, like the other classmates just start to be like, Oh my God! He only, you only have one good memory. Say it ain't so. And they're like, you know, now that we're together, we're gonna make a million of them together. And um, you know, uh, Shoji says that uh, I know, and it'll take more than one generation to tear down like all of the discrimination that they've, that like heteromorphs in general have like gone through or will go through. But all they have to continue to do is like keep keep doing the work and paying it forward. And um, we see that Shoji's goal is to ultimate be, ultimately be the coolest hero the world has ever seen uh, to give good memory and to give good memories for generations to come. Um, mm. And we cut to the present as the battle continues to rage on. Shoji is like shouting down at Spinner. He's like, I was persecuted too. And no, the people who were hurt us weren't justified, but there's got to be a better way. And we cut over to like a flashback of like I guess from Shoji's point of view of seeing uh how um that heteromorphic girl was like thanking Deku for like helping him uh for helping her uh even though that she was like turned away by several shelters during like the dirty Deku days um and um she and Spinner's just like don't care destroy all um Shoji just like kind of implores him to make use of that rage, you know, and try to use it in a more productive way because scars, because we've all got scars that we carry. Um, and, you know, we have this evil, <laughs> the, the, the liberation guy who's just like talking shit in the background. Um, and he's like, do you offer a feasible solution? Only the pathetic cry of your ego. Our hearts have long since hearted by society. Uh, far too hard, hard to be moved by such child, childish naivete. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he's just swarmed by a bunch of like various winged animals. And uh, he turns over and he sees uh, actually Coda, whose like head seems to have opened up uh, and like... It's it, he's just like, I guess, reaching out to a ton of animals using his quirk. And uh, he just like he looks at him and he's just like, don't you dare mark Shoji. And uh, the chapter ends with um, like, I guess, uh, tentacle wrapping his one of his arms with all of his tentacles, like just like, I guess, creating one big muscle uh, attack. And we see that Spinner is just like looking is like gross and there's a big panel of shoji <laughs> loading up this fist and saying yeah this is who i am and that's where the chapter ends um wow we wow um josh what do you think of chapter my uh of my hero academia chapter 371 yeah this is a this is an interesting chapter to me for a couple reasons, uh, I went on a pretty big tangent last week 
about what I thought the themes of this might be, but I think I got a pretty clear message on uh, what Horikoshi's trying to get across, and uh, which is, I don't know, I guess people get treated bad, but you shouldn't lash out negatively in reaction to it. You should have pride in who you are and move forward and past the criticisms. Yeah, and, and, and love yourself. Oh, um, it's kind of weird. We got the, uh, it was funny because last week we were talking about Shoji, uh, like, oh, it, it would have been nice like to see like his backstory of like what happened, like with his, like, you know, with the mask, like why he has a mask, what he's covering it up. And that like it was built up slightly. And, you know, here we go. We got it, you know, in, in a couple of pages. And I wasn't upset about it or nothing. I, I kind of expected that's how it would go down. And it was cool. It was, it was, it was a cool chapter. I like that Shoji is uh, saying a lot of things and standing out. And, and same with the other kid, uh, whose name I can't remember right now, Koda. Uh, I'm really interested in his new diamond head formation. <laughs> I hope it's more than just talking to geese. <laughs> Maybe he can brain control animal morph people. Maybe he'll control Spinner. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Since he's like a simple mind now. Yeah. Tap into the reptilian you know? brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be hilarious. That's what I'm hoping for. Overall, cool chapter. I don't have too much to say i think this i was ex- i was hoping this would be a, something a little bit deeper but mm-hmm. i don't think it is yeah um doesn't make it a bad chapter though yeah brian what did you think about this chapter um well what i thought about this chapter honestly i didn't think much about it um this chapter was um it felt a lot more hollow compared to more of the topics that Horikoshi talks about in the series, like comparatively. Like, this isn't nowhere near as fleshed out as like some of the more, um, like forefront issues that Hero Society has, you know? And that's because it wasn't, it was easily the most, uh, neglected, I'd say. Um, he didn't really give this chance for them to be like, kind of for this to hit harder, you know, like Shoji didn't get his moment until now. Um, it is one of those moments where it would have been nice to see more examples of, uh, heteromorphs being discriminated against in like before this happened in the series, you know, I feel like it would have been, it would have made it hit harder. Um, we didn't get enough of that. Like every time Shoji was around, it was there wasn't a single person who was like, Oh, gross. Fucking heteromorph. Like nothing really, nothing really came, stood out like that. So some of this kind of comes out of nowhere a little bit. Um, spinner would bring it up every now and then, but then again, stories are about showing not just telling you know and if he told if he showed a little bit more in the story it would have been this would have been way way better Uh, that's all my thoughts on it yeah i have a rebuttal oh yeah go for it yeah so well really i was kind of added on to what brian's saying even with spinner's situation He's just kind of been reduced to this mindless beast. And I don't really... I'm trying to find a metaphor in it. Because does he represent something like the blind rage and fury of of angry people who riot or protest? I'm, it's just weird. I don't understand the point. You know, he's just... It would have been nice to get a le- clear level-headed spinner discussing his ideology or giving his account but maybe we'll still get that yeah 
Um, I think you, I think I, I agree with you guys. I think there's, uh, something interesting to be said. I was thinking about, um, last week we talked a little bit about this very issue actually, um, in terms of like how we, we have, you know, we know that like this kind of thing, this is a thing that heteromorphs go through in this world because, you know, we've been told like by spinner before, but I mean, the reason that you have like you know, the the way these, like, uh, self-insert things, like uh, allegories and stuff like that work, you know, people like Shoji, you know, Koda, Tokoyami, like, heteromorphs in general in this story, is that there's, these are all, like, things that we can see, that it separates, like, an essay from a fictional work, you know, is that we have these characters that we can relate to as people. You know, what Horikoshi has done between this chapter and the last chapter, it's not that the message is necessarily bad or wrong or he's not he's he's not doing it correctly. It's just he's kind of just preaching here. Um, and part of the th- thing about showing and not telling is that you have these characters that you can um, use, like, as evidence for your thesis, you know? And we, like Brian said, we haven't seen that, you know? We, we haven't seen that with Shoji. We've gotten hints that this is a thing in this universe. But if we had more like in story examples of this happening to characters that we care about, it would make this a little more significant and it would feel more like visceral to us. You know, if we had seen like examples of Shoji or Tokoyami and stuff getting discriminated against. And I think that's like, There is something to be said about this rural argument that it happens more in rural areas, but, you know, it happens in cities too. But, and, you know, I feel like it's kind of a band-aid that Horikoshi uses, is that the reason that we haven't seen it in story is because most of these characters live in a city and it apparently doesn't happen here, but that's that's just not true. Um, Like, racial inequality happens everywhere. Discrimination happens everywhere. Um, even in like liberal areas, like where we live in New York, it, it happens everywhere. So I feel like it's kind of like a, a way to kind of sweep it under the rug. Why we haven't gotten this stuff before. Um, it's not particularly, it's like fine. It's whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't hit as hard because we haven't seen people that we've, or characters that we've spent time with right, and relate to and are invested in go through this already. And, you know, it would have hit harder if we had seen it. Um, that kind of stuff is important, I guess. Um, I had another thought that I'm trying to think of, actually, uh, on top of that. Oh, uh, one positive thing I did like from this chapter, uh, a good message here. And, um, you know, this is kind of where it is helpful to have, like, a non-super-specific uh, to the real world thing. You know, it's a lot like the X-Men where... Uh, heteromorphs mutants stuff like that it's all it it can cross the spectrum of marginalized folks you know from like um there's like racial barriers there's uh you know uh gender and sex uh gender and sexual orientation and um you know disabilities even and uh i think there's something uh really nice about that little moment where we see that shoji uh, uses this body that was made that he was made to feel ashamed of to do good and save people and finding power in that I think that's a really good message to get across uh, to, to folks you know so I like that a lot about this chapter that little moment was really cool this little flashback um, I feel like if this has happened earlier <laughs> you know that would have been great <laughs> if we because you know if this, if these pages came in like way before, it was like before this final battle, we would have had context. We would have like really had time to sit with Shoji and like feel these emotions with him and that are not mixed in the like heat of battle. Uh, and I feel like uh, all this stuff would have impacted us more a little. Uh, but overall, I do like that little story he told. And I love how like it kind of touches Coda as well, you know? bringing something out in him that we haven't seen uh just a couple positives to go with uh all the negative um but you know overall i i like it okay like josh said it's nothing like uh world breaking or anything you know um but i enjoyed it 
quite a bit. 